Hi, everyone. Welcome and thanks for attending on April Fools. I'm Scott, a Chief Architect, and we're here today to discuss roof tips and tricks. Also on today's webinar are a number of Chief Architect staff to keep an eye on me and to help with your questions. I'm first going to go through my presentation, which should take about 25 minutes. During this time, you can chat your questions in. And then at the conclusion of the presentation, you can raise your hand and ask your questions live. When you do that, just be sure to unmute your microphone. You'll find that setting in the GoToWebinar control panel. Our session today will be recorded. We'll be sending a link out in the next day or so with that recording along with a survey. We always appreciate your feedback. With that, let me switch over and get started with our presentation. In this roof tips and tricks session, I'm going to look at a number of tips you can use when building your roofs. You can control building roofs a number of ways just by using the automatic roof tools. Beyond the automatic tools, you can use the manual roof tools to create just about any style of roof. I'll go through the steps to create a compound curved roof. Finally, we'll take a look at a roof project where we can dramatically change the look of the house with different roof styles. Let's go into the program and get started. In this Chief Architect sample plan that I have open, it's a simple rectangular garage with a covered porch that we're going to go through and look at our roof tools. Let's begin by going up into the menu and coming into the Build Roof Options. Underneath Build Roof, the program has a number of roof styles that it can generate. By coming down to the Roof tab, you can click on any one of these images and the program will open up the help file directly to how to create that roof and you can see what the steps are in creating it. All of these roof styles you see in this dialog can be created automatically using the roof. Let's go through and create a few of them. On the main roof panel, I'm going to come in and I'm going to turn on the automatic roof rebuild. That means any changes that I make to the model, moving a wall, toggling a wall to a gable or a shed, the program will automatically generate the roof for me. For the roof pitch, I'm going to use 6 and 12. As far as the overhang options and other options, I'm just going to accept the defaults and build a 6 and 12 pitched roof. In this case, we built an automatic hip roof. One of the things you can do is easily make these changes. And since the automatic roof is on, I click on this wall and in my lower status bar, you're going to see a tool that will toggle that wall to a full gable wall. I'll go ahead and rotate around the back side of the house, select the wall, using the exact same tool, create a full gable. Press the space bar to deselect the wall, and now you can see how quickly you create that style of a roof. When you want to reset the pitch of the roof, let's go back into the Build Roof option come in here and I'm just going to simply change the pitch from 6 and 12 to 2 and 12. Now to create a shed roof, let's rotate around. I'm just going to use my middle mouse button. I'm holding my Alt key down to rotate around. I'm going to tap on this wall. I don't have a toggle in my lower status bar for converting that to a shed roof, but if you double click and open this wall up, there is a roof panel for this wall specification and you'll find a number of roof options. Roofs in the program are controlled by walls and when we converted this outside wall to a gable what the program was doing is just toggling this setting to a full gable wall. Now for this side wall that I opened up I'm going to make sure that it's a high shed gable wall and when we close the dialog you'll see that the program will automatically create that shed roof for us. Now I'm going to go through the steps in creating this compound curved roof that you see on your screen. And let's begin by using the shed roof as a way to begin that process. When I use the manual roof tools, I usually have the automatic roof tools get me as far as I can because it saves me a lot of time. I'm going to begin by clicking on that roof and I'm going to come down and use the copy button and then I'm going to copy and paste this in place. If you're using an older version you may see a slightly different tool. When you use this operation the program is going to ask you if you would like to turn off the automatic roofs. And in this case to create the manual curved roof I'm going to turn that feature off. Now that I've made a copy of that roof plane in the exact same coordinates 
I'm going to use this red handle. I'm going to drag it past the post and beam support and let's click on the top of it, pull it down just a little bit and now we'll go ahead and join that. You'll see the snap right in here. Now at this point I have two unique roof planes. Let's begin by looking at the uppermost roof plane. Let's double click, open it up. When you are manually editing these roof planes in the roof specification is an option towards the middle part of the dialog to curve the roof. At the ridge I want to set that at zero degrees. Let's go ahead and put zero in here. At this point the program is going to ask us if we need to make some adjustments in the plate height. I'm going to go ahead and let the program do that for me. The other thing I'm going to do is at the eave which will be down here at the edge of the house that angle will now be at 18.92. I'm going to copy that value and use it in the next segment of the roof. Let's grab the next segment of the roof and make a similar modification. Double click to open it up and at this point we'll curve the roof and at the ridge which should be at the highest point I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste that value of 18.92. That will make sure that it's a very smooth and compound curve to create that roof segment. And you can see we now have a nice compound curve and that seam matches up exactly because we pasted in the value from the other curve. Now let's go back through and rebuild this roof and look at a few other options. I'm going to come back into the build menu, down to roof, and when I come in to rebuild the roof automatically, the program is going to ask you if you want to rebuild the roof and remove the surfaces that you've changed. And it will delete those. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now let's go back around. Let's tap on this wall. I'm going to reset that back to a regular hip style wall. So we have gables on both ends. And we probably want to make this a back to the 6 and 12 pitched roof. So let's just go back in real quickly and change that back to a 6 and 12 pitched roof. Now one of the things you can do is you can create roof ends and what's called a Dutch gable. Let's click on this end wall above the garage and just double click to open it up. On the roof panel what you can do is you can select that this is a Dutch gable wall. From that point you can come in from the baseline which is inside from the wall where the roof would bear on top of the wall. And I'm just going to come in here and move that in 24 inches. And let's take a look at how that changes the roof style. That's called a Dutch gable roof inside of the program. So we rotate around to the back side. Let's look at the option of creating a roof return. So I'm going to tap on this wall, double click to open it up, and you're going to find the auto roof return and there's a few options in here. The length of the return, the extend amount, whether you want it to be gable, hip, or full. I'm going to choose that it's a full roof return and we'll accept the rest of the defaults inside of this roof return. So that's called a full roof return inside of the program. Now the next step for the roof is to create a dual pitch. To do that let's grab this wall, click on it, and now I'm going to hold my Alt key down and my middle mouse button to rotate around. Hold my Shift key down so I can grab both walls simultaneously. At that point, let's use the Open and on the roof panel, let's come in here and put that there is an upper pitch. And for the upper pitch, let's just use that it's 2 and 12. And in from the baseline, I'm just going to set that to be 72 inches. And let's see what that looks like. So this is more barn-like in this look. Now the next step is let's figure out how to use the manual roof tool and draw a roof plane over the top of the post and beam and then have that roof plane connect into this roof. It's going to be easiest to do that in the floor plan view. Let's click on the panel for the floor plan and right in here is where I want to use the roof tool to draw over the top of the beam. You'll find the roof plane tool underneath of the build roof tool and when you get ready to use this since I have the automatic roof tool on and I left click and drag the program at this point is going to ask you if you would like to turn off the automatic rebuild roofs and I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Now notice when I clicked and dragged that roof plane I didn't worry about being too exact. 
it's important when you're drawing roofs or ceilings for that matter don't worry about being too exact you can always fix it later and that way you're not worried about where it's going to snap and then I'll just use the edit tools and I'll pull it onto the edge of the beam both ways now to figure out exactly where this roof plane is let's use the elevation tool and take a look I'm going to come into the menu. I'm going to use the cross-section elevation tool. Come out here and I'm just going to click and drag to create the elevation. Now you can see that this roof plane came in at the same height as the fascia. It also came in at the default 6 and 12 pitch. I want to move this roof plane down so that it bears on top of the post. If I click towards the top of it and double click to open it up, let's go in and take a look at the settings that we want to do first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I lock and you can lock a number of things and this roof plane will pivot about it you can see that lock indicator moving around if I lock the fascia top which would be right over in here and then we change the pitch let's go ahead and shift that to 3 and 12 close the dialog it pivoted that roof around that point now the next thing I want to do if I zoom in is figure out how much further down do I need to move this and you can use the tape measure tool and I'm just going to come in here and measure approximately what that distance is so we'll come up and it looks like maybe 11 and a half or 12 inches we'll just make it 12 inches so let's go back into that roof plane double click to open it up I'm going to make sure that I do lock pitch in this case and then at the fascia top I'm just going to say minus 12 inches press the tab key you can see what all the values are for the different locations close that and now that pulls that roof plane right down where I need it now back in the 3d view rotate around you can see we now need to figure out where is this roof plane going to intersect into the larger roof easiest way to do that is just click on this roof plane notice that the upper edge has a red selection handle that means it's the active edge you'll find a join roof plane tool in the lower section of my menu there's also a number two next to it which means the number two is a shortcut to invoke that tool click that tool come over here click on the roof plane you can see that it joins sometimes you may need to press the F12 key on it to force the rebuild and now you can see where it joins let me go ahead and pull that back and I'm going to show you one other way to figure out exactly where that roof plane needs to join let's go over into the floor plan view and take a look one of the tools you can use to figure out where this roof plane joins the other roof plane is you can project an intersection point you're gonna find this setting underneath of your preferences underneath the architectural panel and if you check this option here to place automatic roof intersection points this will help to project the intersection points for the two roof planes Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the larger roof plane. Then I'm going to click on the edge of the smaller roof plane. You'll see the projected CAD point. I'll click on the edge, pull it out until it snaps on there. You can see that it now is intersected and you can confirm that into the 3D view. And we've used that projected point to determine where those two roofs will intersect. Now the next step I want to go through is to take the covered porch and have it meet the fascia of the larger roof. I'm going to click on the smaller roof plane. I'm just going to pull it back and let's go back into the floor plan view and let's snap that on top of the larger roof plane. Back in the plan view, we'll come over, click on this, pull it in there. And when you look at this in the elevation view, there will be a mismatch on where those are at. What I need to do is pivot that roof down and have it match into the fascia. Let's figure out what we have here. Let's click on the roof plane here. Double click and open it up. I want to take a look at what the shadow board height is. I'm going to highlight that value, copy it, and we'll close that dialog. I'm going to open up the smaller roof plane and in this case I want to make sure that I lock the fascia top and then for the ridge top I'm going to come in paste that value in there, press tab, it will show you the updates and the new pitch for that smaller roof. And then that should match up exactly and we can confirm that in the elevation view to make sure that those two roof planes are exactly matched up. Now the next step I want to go through is to create a story and a half. And as I get ready to do that, I want to show you the steps to delete all of your roof planes and reset 
all of your walls. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make a copy of this roof plane because I don't want to go through the steps and recreate it. So I'm just going to copy that control C or command C for a Mac and then let's go into the edit menu and I'm going to come down to delete objects. Underneath delete objects I'm going to come over and I'm going to delete all of the roof planes. And then the next step if you want to reset all of your walls back to normal Underneath of the edit menu is an option to reset to defaults. In this dialog you can choose to reset for all floors and in this case what I want to do is come down and choose the roof directives in walls. Remember walls in Chief Architect direct how the roof will be built. Let's go ahead and return back to the 3D view. Now the step to create a story and a half Let's begin by building a second floor. I'm going to come into the build menu, come down to build floor, and we're just going to build a new second floor with a default 8 foot ceiling. And then let's go back into the build roof option and let's just turn on our automatic roof and take a look. Now this is just considered a two story house. Let's switch this back to full gable wall. We'll grab both walls and toggle those back. So this is a two-story house and what I want to do is I want to go through the step to create the what's called a story and a half. Back into the build roof menu and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to ignore the second floor. So it will then force the roof to build at the top of the first floor. But what I want to do is I'm going to raise that roof up I'm going to raise it 5 feet or 60 inches. And again, the key to this is ignore the top or second floor. That's going to build the roof on top of the first floor, but it's going to raise it up 5 feet. And you're going to notice what happened in this case is it changed the roof to a hip roof. Remember, we reset the walls and it's using the walls and ignoring those on the top floor. And what I need to do now is just grab those lower walls and convert them to a gable and we're right back to where we were. So this is called a story and a half. You can toggle the glass house view on and verify what just happened here. And on the sides over here, it would have raised that roof 60 inches on the sides. It's called a story and a half. Oftentimes you'll have a couple of walls in here that would be maybe considered a knee wall and then you've lowered your roof and built it on that first floor, raised it up off the plate, whatever the predetermined distance is. Now I'm just going to use the copy paste hold position, turn off the automatic roof, we'll pull that other roof plane in and then we'll snap that onto the wall and now I have that roof back on that we had originally deleted. Now the key to making any changes to this roof would be required to be done on the first floor. Let's go ahead and grab the two sidewalls. I'm going to hold my Alt key down and the middle mouse button to rotate around. I'm going to grab these two walls, open them up. We'll go back in and change the pitch to 2 and 12 and in from the baseline. Let's set that at 72 inches. And when I make that change, you're not going to see anything happen because when I pasted the roof on the other side, we turned off the automatics. Let's take a look at how you can rebuild the roof but not lose this manually drawn roof plane. Inside of the build roof dialog you're going to find an option to rebuild the roof. I don't want to turn on the automatic. The automatic would remove the manual roof plane we created over the covered area. I'm going to click build roof planes and then use this one that says retain manually drawn roof planes. You can also use this tool called retain edited automatic roof planes. If I were to manually edit this and make a change to it, that's when I would use that option. So by turning on the build roof, not auto, and retain the automatic, you can see that the roof then rebuilds and it just requires you to click the build option if you've manually drawn a roof plane and you want to retain it. So this is a story and a half with a two pitch and that's how the roof tools work in a nutshell. I'm going to skip ahead here and I'm going to open up a completed project and let's go through the process of transforming the roof. Now in this portion of the session, let's have a little bit of fun. I've opened up the bachelor view sample plane and I want to create this style of a roof. 
When you come into the floor plan view, you can see all the walls laid out. And I'm going to do this roof design in 3D. You may find it's easier to do it in 2D, but it will be visually easier for you to follow. Let's go into the build menu and come down and create our roof. And what I want to do with the initial roof is turn on the automatics. I'm going to build it at 2 and 12, and then I'm just going to leave the default settings for the rest of the roof. And this is going to create the default hip roof that you can see as we move around. Now one of the tips that I like to do is I like to make a lot of changes simultaneously. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the back wall and all of the walls really that need to be full gable walls. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and grab these two walls. Now you'll notice that there are other walls that I'm going to want to select. I can't seem to get to them in this selection mode. I'm on a PC and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my Alt key down and my middle mouse button. That will allow me to maintain the selection of the two walls. I can hold my Shift key down and get the third wall. We'll rotate around to get the front. Now if you're using a Mac, key that you can use on a Mac would be the Command Alt left mouse button, I believe it is, and then you can do the same selection. So all I'm doing here on the PC is holding my Alt key down and middle mouse button and that allows me to select all the walls and as we kind of toggle up you can see all the walls that I have selected and now I can convert those to a full gable wall and save myself a little bit of time and not do multiple selections. Okay. Let's take a look at this area that would be the bedroom. I want to have a shed style roof for the bedroom. I'm going to select the two side walls, grab both of those, double click to open them up, come over, mark that they're a high shed gable wall, and now you can see the effect of that. Let's do the exact same thing on the main living area. This is the main living area right in here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the two side walls, so click, shift click, use the open button here and make the same change to the high shed gable wall and then you can see what that looks like. Now one of the things that looks a little bit odd is we don't have much of a gap in here where that shed meets the ridge. So I want to change the pitch for this roof only for this section. So how do I do that? Let's rotate around. Let's grab the two opposing walls. So click, shift click. I'm going to come down, open those two walls up, and I'm going to come in and change the pitch for those walls. And it's only going to change it for those walls. So the rest of the roof is going to stay at 2 and 12, whereas that segment would change to 3 and 12. Here's another tool that I like to use, the gable roof line. If you take, just for the example of this, we take this gable that's on this side and we want to make that gable come across here and make it symmetrical. What's the best way to do that? Well, there's a couple of tools that you can use. Let's switch our save plan view over to the roof view so we can see what we have. In this view you can see all of the roof planes. One of the tools that we have is called the gable roof line. And if you come in somewhere near the edge of that wall and you draw the gable roof line, it will automatically create a gable for you. It's a handy tool if you're drawing it over an entryway against a flat wall or maybe over a window. Let me show you another way to do that because I want this to be exactly symmetrical. And if I toggle on my crosshair, I want that roof plane to come down and be exactly symmetrical. And I don't want to try to click on this and pull it over and maybe run a dimension and figure out where it's at exactly. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I might use to make that exactly symmetrical. Click on this wall, and this is a temporary edit. I'm going to pull this wall down so I know exactly where it's going to intersect. And now I'm going to take this larger wall down here and I'm going to use the break tool. I'm going to create a break right at this intersection. Using the break tool, let's come in here, use the break tool. I'm going to put a notch right in that segment. Now I can tap on that wall. I can use the toggle to toggle that to a gable wall. And now that gable exactly matches the other gable above. And then we'll just simply pull this wall back snap that into place and then back in the 3D view you can see that we have that gable over the top of it. Now the final thing that we might take a look at is 
what about providing an option to the client that this roof would be curved? Well, we looked at that earlier. You can open up this roof by double clicking on it. You can come down to the curve section at the ridge, type in zero, and that will curve that segment. Program will prompt you to turn off the automatics. We're okay with that. And then with this gap in here, you can use the join roof plane tool. The shortcut is number two on your keyboard. Click on the other roof plane and it will then merge the two. You can do the exact same operation. The number two on the keyboard, click on this one and it will join the two roof planes and now you can evaluate if you like that segment curve or not. And now when you take a look at my screen that I have up now, this is what the final roof ended up looking like where we put larger windows on the back. I hope you enjoyed this session on roof tips and tricks. I would encourage you to try these same types of steps to practice your roof skills. Enjoy. Okay, great. So with that, uh, we're going to open this up for questions. If you actually have a question that you'd like to ask, you can raise your hand. You'll find that setting in the GoToWebinar control panel. And when we uh, call on you, just be sure to unmute your microphone and go ahead and ask your question. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carrie. She's going to help curate the questions for us. Hey, Scott, our first question comes from Heidi. Hi, Heidi, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, um, I'm having trouble with roofs and dormers. Hmm. Um, what I'm trying to do, and I, I don't know if there's a way I can show you my, I've got a picture up of what I'm trying to create, but I, mm -hmm. can I show it to you somehow? Uh, Heidi, you could send us an email. We'll take a look at it. We, okay, and, and maybe uh, it would even be helpful on April 22nd, we have a dedicated seminar to, to dormers. And that would be a great opportunity. If you want to send it in, we can take a look at it and certainly uh, handle that. We also have a tech group, but I don't really have a way that you could share your screen right now. I guess, okay, this is question. So when you do a, a bow window or a box window, um, the outside wall of that bow window isn't really a wall, right? I mean, you can't, at least I have not been able to select it to change the roof over. If I go into that window, there isn't a roof selection okay. option to change. So if I want to make that a curved roof over that dormer, um, I can't really select that wall to make it. I'm not explaining very well. <laughs> yeah, why don't you uh, send that in? I'm <clears throat> I'm not sure. I've got a I've got a bay window here. Uh, it's not curved, of course. Uh, that's kind of what I was looking for here. But I've got a, a small bay window with a roof out over that. And, okay. So, uh, all right. You take that. What if you wanted to take that up to so it came all the way up to the second story and had a roof where the where the um, the original roof still stayed in place. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the bow was even with the outside uh, of the regular. I don't know. I, I guess I just need to send it in because I yeah, can't. Yeah, Heidi, just uh, if you would, just send that in. We'll take a look at it. And then uh, be sure to sign up for the, for the webinar on the 22nd. We're dedicating the entire session of that specifically for dormers. There's lots of different dormers, whether it's barrel dormer, eyebrow, shed. And that'd be a great way that we could maybe incorporate that right into uh, into the Q&A for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Heidi. Scott, our next question is from Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Uh, so yeah, I have a dormer one too, but we'll we'll put a pin in that one for uh, for next time. Um, so my question is, we didn't touch on it this one, uh, and maybe it's going to be. And I know we've got a series of roof stuff, but when you're doing skylights, mm -hmm. um, let's start out with, hey, I'm going to pull up my Velux catalog, and I've got a certain size. Okay. So my question is, when you do that in plan. You know, let's say it's, you know, 21 and three quarters by 46. Right. And you draw your thing. 
once it's in the roof plane, it's not that same dimension anymore. It's like it, 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 it puts the slope factor into it. What's the trick to get the right size looking skylight for the right size actual skylight? Right. So you're looking at the projected versus actual. Correct. So like if you're drawing it actual, because that's the only way you can really think about it, mm -hmm. it, it turns out to be different projected based on your roof pitch. Right. You know, I put yeah. the slope factor into it. But it's like, yeah, I can do the math, but isn't there a better way? <laughs> well, it turns out that uh, college uh, trigonometry class uh, was pretty good. Um, we don't have an automated way to convert the actual to projected. And, and I might just pause here. Al, you're out there. Do you uh, do you have any tips that you share on how you might handle something like this? Um, typically, I'm going to be using uh, a polyline or a, a polyline box uh, to set uh, the, uh, the actual size of the skylight. And what I'll do is I'll match the top edge of the box to the appropriate size. Like if the top slopes at four and 12, I'll set that at a four and 12, then I'll measure that distance and set the size. That'll give me the projection at the bottom. I thought 13, uh, X13 had something for this. We, uh, we don't have any automated way to take the uh, actual and projected values in, in the, uh, for skylights. Because I could reduce everything by the slope factor percentage mm -hmm. or whatever, but again, there's so much, you know, ones and zeros bouncing around in this program. It's like, well, sure. I think there's there. Anyway, right. Feature right. update. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Brandon. Yep. Scott, our next question is from Kent. Hi, Kent. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah. Hi. Um, so mine is kind of a similar. Uh, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to build a Cape Cod slash craftsman style house that has a story and a half above it. But what it has, the house plans that I'm trying to replicate basically have gables on four ends. So you end up with two different roof heights. Uh, and, and I've been messing with this for quite some time in the manual roof tool. And I can never really get the roof to join correctly. Do you have any tips on that? So you have a four sided house and each side has a gable. Yeah, so like the, the shorter the shorter side would have the lower roof pitch, and the longer dimension would have the longer would have the taller roof pitch, and trying to basically have that two gable walls like that. Okay. I mean, four gable walls. Okay, so let's see, uh, Ken, if we can take a peek here, and let me close this one. And I've got a simple little uh, rectangle house here. Mm -hmm. And if I were to take and uh, maybe add a couple walls, let's get rid of my post and let's just add a couple walls where we'd have maybe a four sided house. And we'll just take and maybe copy these, make that. Or you can even just use the rectangle that you have there and just, you know, like I'm, I'm looking at. So one side would have a, you know, the gable would be on all four sides of the same of the straight walls. Mm hmm. So let me uh, let me just grab this so I can at least quickly show you, and then we can kind of pick it apart. So I'm just going to copy those walls. We'll flip it over to the other side. Oops. Let me grab those again. Copy those around. And then um, I'm going to take and lower these just to be make sure that they don't conflict because they'll be a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to lower that maybe by 12 inches. And then let's go ahead and build our roof. See what happens. And we'll just use an eight and 12 pitch. And let's see if we can see what we've got going on. Make sure we get your question answered. So what do we need to do to get this closer to what you're looking for? Uh, so in essence, yes, that is the roof style that I'm looking to do. But instead of having the two bump outs on the north and south wall, that wall would just be flush. So that so wall flush. I'll, I'll, yeah. Okay. So what we can do, let's uh, let's come in here. I'm going to take this solid wall that's going all the way across, and I'm just going to kind of notch that out. So let's um, just break that out, and we'll just kind of use our break tool in here. And then I'm going to take this wall that I've created a segment for, 
and I'm going to make it a gable wall. Okay. Okay. And then let's go ahead and delete those elements. And I still have the automatic roof on, so it will update. Is this closer to what you're looking for? Yes, that, that is what I'm looking to do. So that's so the, the quick way of doing it. Yeah, so the trick to that is I actually have three walls here. So I have a regular hip wall, the gable wall, and then a hip wall. Okay. Another so way how, you can do that is... How do you maximize is, that to get it so that they're pretty close to the same roof heights or if you wanted to... So that way you can stick a window in there or a partial space. I want to widen out that smaller gable. Is there oh, any... Oh, sure. Yeah. So there, there's another way you can do this too. If we get rid of this on the other side, there's another way you can do that with a gable line. Have you used that tool? No. So underneath the uh, roof tools, you're going to find a tool down here. Let me mouse over this so you can see this. So it's called the roof gable line. Mm -hmm. And if we just kind of come in here, I'm just going to guess approximately where it's being displayed. And that will generate a, a gable for you. Okay. And if you want to make this larger, right, you can pull this out. Oh to whatever you want so you don't actually have to use a different wall type if you don't want to mm -hmm. does that work for you yeah cool thank you yeah that you might want cool. to paste that in the help section that that's a great help on the roof tools there you bet the roof thank you yep thanks for calling in today let's check in with laura Hi, Laura. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for that webinar once again. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, first of all, you were do when you're doing the story and a half, I do those a lot. And when I have varying roof height, uh, ceiling heights on the floor below, mm -hmm. and so the attic wall is created above, mm -hmm. um, it, if I try to change that to a different type of shingle, it's all uneven. Um, is there a way short of, because they always say not to like pull the walls. Okay. Um, so do you understand what I'm saying? Sorry if I'm um, not. Yeah, I'm trying to I, see if I have an example here. We've got that story and a half. I was trying to see if that picture was the same. It doesn't look like it is. So maybe uh, try that one more time, Laura. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around exactly what you're, what you're, what you're asking yeah. here. Okay, so you know when you when you do the story and a half and you're moving the way you just showed, you're moving the roof up and down. Mm -hmm. Um this is on the first floor I've got varying ceiling heights because maybe oh. I'll put tray ceiling. Okay. And that changes the height of the attic wall above sure. when you put the roof. And right. if you want to change that attic wall to a different wall type like a shingle versus mm. a side. Okay. Kind of like zigzag. Hmm. And I know you can kind of pull the wall, but that kind of, I feel like, messes things up when you just pull a wall by the, um, you know, to adjust the size of it. Okay. Let's see if we can do something that gets close to what you're after. So let's go back in here. And if we build a second story on this house, let's come in and down to the build floor. And so we'll just build a new floor and let it copy the uh, same values. We have eight feet. And um, when we build the room. Say, say on the first floor, you put you separated that into two rooms and you changed the ceiling height on one of the rooms. So they're not the same ceiling height. Okay. So something like this. Yeah. And then um, when you. So how, how much higher do you want it? A foot or something? Yeah, foot is fine. Okay, plus 12. Okay, so okay. then we, um, when you're looking, when you put your roof on on this second floor. Okay, I don't have one yet. Because right. I, I, I remove like, like you're doing the story and a half, right? You put your roof on and then you, okay. you, know, you say um, disregard whatever that thing is, you know, then you put it up five feet, however you just did it. Mm -hmm. um, but you see those walls, how they're, you got like that L shape there. Yeah. 
And when you, after you put your roof on and you've got your story and a half, um, say you wanted to, um, the top part of the wall going to the roof, uh -huh. you put that a different, um, a different kind of siding, like a shingle. Okay. All right. So when we build the roof here, well, actually, we're going to build a second story. And then right. when we build build the roof, of course, let's let's just kind of do this in order. Let's build right. our yeah. store. Just like you did before, where you put it on, you ignored the top floor or whatever. Yep. So I'm just going to build a new floor. And we'll just leave it. Okay. So we have something like this, right? And then when we build the roof, we come in here. Let's turn on automatic roofs. Let's make it 6 and 12. Let's ignore the second floor and then we'll raise or lower that um, and maybe make it um, 60 inches so we have about five feet in there okay and I've got some crazy wall that we just drew okay so here's the current inside, condition yes yeah, so say that area inside the gable you want to make like a, a different type of you know a shake or a different finish Right, right in here. Uh huh. Okay, sure. So let's just use uh, to be quick at it. Let's use the stone. So I'm going to pick up the stone using the material eyedropper on the bottom, mm -hmm. and I'm in component mode, right, with my material eyedropper component mode for C, mm -hmm. and I spray this on there, and I change it. Is that what you're after? Yeah. So say if you turn to the side because. Um, you know, if you kind of rotate around, okay, make try and spray that upper area on the side. <laughs> you see is what happens? What yeah, it, what happens to me is well, well say for example, um, you just want to get that um, stone in that top triangle portion. Would you just pull the oh. wall up? Okay, so let's. Let's undo that a couple times. You just want the <laughs> material only in this little section right here, right? Right. Okay. So what you can do in this case, let's take an elevation view. And if you look at this wall, it's, it's actually a pretty tall wall, right? And if I spray that, it's going to take that entire section. We have what's called a wall material region tool. And if you, you can find that underneath your build menu, come down to wall, and it's called wall material region. I'll pause there, a little lag on the video. Wall material region. And if I come in here and we draw one of these, it's, we'll have to shape it a little bit. Uh, and sometimes it will cut automatically for you. So we'll just kind of let the program do that. And then we'll pull it down just a little bit so we get those eaves. And there we go. Oh, that's awesome. I never saw that thing there. <laughs> yeah, it's called the wall material region. And uh, so that may be a, a way that can help you out with those materials. Okay, that's cool. Now, my other question is, um, when you are building the walls, you know, I, I do a lot of the manual roofs. And then um, sometimes I want to, um, you know, turn on the automatic build and you've got, you check that option um, to retain the walls that you've done manually. Mm -hmm. And when I use that tool, what happens is um, it maintains those walls, but still uh, the, the roofs, but it still builds another roof either on mm -hmm. top of it or below it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a look. If we did something, um, let's just draw an extra roof plane in here. So we'll come in and let's just use our manual roof plane tool and we'll click and drag and just put a roof out here. So I'm going to turn off the automatic roofs at this point because I just drew a manual roof. So I just kind of threw this out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, I've done some work to this. Maybe I've curved it or something interesting. And I want to rebuild the roof but I don't want to affect this roof plane that's been edited in any way. So when you go back into the build roof, the key to this is to check, and you can check both of these, 
If you've edited anything manually, which is what this curved roof is, it will retain it. And if you retain something that's been manually edited, it won't rebuild a second roof for you. Okay, so it's the, so if I take this roof, <clears throat> let's say that um, I take this wall for some reason, and let's um, change the pitch of it to be four and twelve. And now I want to rebuild the roof, right? But I want to have a duplicated roof. So we go back in and we say build roof, and I want to retain anything in here. It's going to retain it on that, and I'm not going to get a duplicated roof. Okay, so the trick is checking both of those boxes then? Yeah, if, you, if you're unsure if it's been something that's been manually drawn, which is in this case, or if I manually kind of adjust this roof, you know, if I were to click on this and I pull it back just a little bit, I've manually edited an automatic roof plane because that was automatically generated. So when I rebuild this roof, I want to make sure that I check both of those things. And that way, I'm not going to get an additional roof plane over the top of one another. Okay, that was definitely it. I know I was checking one of the boxes. I didn't realize I had to check the second. So that's... Aspect. It's usually, yeah, it's usually a safe thing to do. But if that's happening to you, yeah, check both of those. Uh, can I ask you one other quick question? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. If you wouldn't mind, maybe uh, when we have time at the end, jump back in. And because uh, uh -huh. I know there was quite a few people, but we'd be happy if we have time at the end, Laura. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Scott, we have Julie here with a question. Hi, Julie, go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Um, in your example, in your video that we watched, you worked on the shed plane. Um, I noticed when you wanted to adjust the angle of the roof, the pitch of the roof, you didn't go and edit the roof plane itself, so to speak. You went in and you you clicked on the lower shed wall and changed the pitch that way. Right. I think um, it might be that uh, I don't necessarily understand uh, all the terminology uh, when I open up and edit roof plane. Um, yeah, if you could do that. Sure. Let's take a look here, Julie, and see if we can uh, get back to a uh, shed condition. So okay. typically when you do a shed, right, the two mm -hmm. end walls here are going to be gable walls. So I've already got those set up to be gable. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to take this far wall here and let's make this our high shed wall. So on the roof panel, I'm going to mark that it's a high shed gable wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when we go in to build the roof, let's just maybe set that to be 3 and 12, and let's leave our automatics on. Does that work? And yeah. And let's take, let's take a peek at it and see what we've got here. So let's go back into a 3D view. And so a lot of times I like to let the program manage building the roof for me. You have full manual tools. But the program's pretty powerful. So if I want to change the pitch of this, you know, I'm going to tap on this wall over here and you can change the pitch of it. And remember, my automatics are on. And so that will mm -hmm. update the roof for me. Now, you can go in, right, and open up the roof and you could lock, you know, typically what I'm going to do yes. is. Lock. That's the problem I run into. I don't know what to lock. <laughs> yeah, well, this it, it, one of the things that's always good to know is you look at this graphic, right? So let's pull this down mm -hmm. a little bit so we can see the roof. So when you kind of mouse through this graphic, you can figure out what's being locked. So what's important to you when you're doing your roof? So once you figure out what that is, do you want to maintain the pitch? Well, if you want to maintain the pitch, you can lock the pitch. If you want to maintain the plate height, you can lock the plate height. And then let's say I want to have the ridge at 176. You press the tab key, you can see what the new pitch of the roof is. Mm -hmm. When you do this, the program is going to pop up a message that says, hey, I'm going to turn off your automatics. And that's okay, but you can manually edit that roof any way you want. 
And really the key to that is figuring out what's going to be lost yes. because that roof is then going to pivot about that point. Okay. And so when you did this in your, in your video, when you changed the slope, the pitch of that roof plane, you chose to click on the, if I remember right, you chose on the lower shed wall and changed the pitch there. Correct. Oh, uh, could you have just as well clicked on the upper shed wall and changed the well, pitch there? Well, let's, uh, let's go back to the automatics. Let's turn the ba automatics back on and let's go ahead and say, okay. So we're back to automatic roofs. So I click on the opposite wall. We click on the high shed wall and you go in here and you're going to notice that the pitch is grayed out here. Okay. Right. So yes. that's a clue that says, well, okay, the control for that roof is actually on the bearing side on the opposite. And so that's where you can change the pitch and you can see it generate for you. Okay. But I try to I try to typically use the automatics yeah. as much as possible because it's you know the program knows how to especially this is a simple roof but if as yeah. soon as you get a bunch of connections in there you can start chasing your own tail the program's pretty good at being able to generate <laughs> them for you yeah if, if you start trying to manually edit inside you know use opening up the roof plane and changing the pitch. If you don't know what you're doing, you can really mess things up. I guess what okay. I'm trying to say. it's better to let the automatic tools do it. Yeah, I, okay. I think that's I think that's good good advice. <laughs> okay, all right, th thank you. You bet. Thanks for calling in. Scott, we have Eric here. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, Eric. How you doing, Scott? Hi, Eric. Great. Well, thank you very much. This was awesome. That alt alternate. Uh, with the shift and rotating around for selections is a game changer. I've been killing myself doing sections around each part of the house. So mm. awesome stuff. Yeah, but uh, see if I can explain it without pictures and stuff. But perfect example would be that house you have right in front of you there, where the where different planes and different height walls and different roofs are all joining together. Uh, I run into issues a lot when when I'm bringing a roof plane into like the side wall of the taller wall and sometimes, and, and when I'm trying to create a valley off of that also, I end up with parts of the roof inside and also sometimes the siding, I can't get that siding to break from an interior to an exterior above mm -hmm. and below the roof. Okay. So like even on, on that house you have right in front of us here, let's, let's say maybe the left side there where that roof dies in, if if you know, in that section there, if that if that tall wall projects all the way back through, you know, and, and converts to an interior wall. Right. Like that higher triangle, I sometimes run into a snag where I'm actually looking at siding on the inside, you know, or whatever the exterior material is on the inside of the house. Mm -hmm. I just I don't know if and if I've always built these from the roof plane and opened up the roof and done those adjustments. So I don't know if maybe starting with the wall plane and going through my roofs that way might, might help out a little bit in the future. Right, let's um, let's see if we can take a peek and help you with that. Let me yeah. just toggle my camera here just a little bit. Okay, so here's an example. If you look at this wall right here, and we go into the house, you can actually see that wall and let me toggle on my glass house view so it's a little easier to see what's going on here. There we go. So if you kind of look at that wall, right, it's yep. going through the house, right? So there's a setting on this wall. Let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and open it up here. And down on the, uh, the roof panel, you see in the very bottom of this, Eric, Gotcha. So cool. what, what's going on here is the the roof is going through. Let's pull this back a little bit. The roof is going through and down into the house where the, the, the wall is. And it's on the end where it's facing the back of the house. It's taller and as it slopes and goes into the house, the other roof plane, which is um, right about here where my mouse is, is actually cutting 
and yeah. covering up that wall. So what you can do is where the where the wall is being cut by it's actually called split by the budding roof. You can choose which wall type you'd like to have, and you can see in this example, I'm using an interior six. If yep. I don't have this checked, right, it's going to use the default wall type, which is, let me toggle back to our standard view here. It's going to be this siding color, but this roof plane that's right here, right, is actually cutting it. And when you separate that and you go down into the house, this wall is now using that interior six wall that we specified. Man, that's exactly what I was looking for. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Good. So I think when the roof parts are coming through, it's just me being a little sloppy with how I'm making my connections and stuff. Yeah. That, that was one of my main concerns was, was just okay. getting the material separated up. Yeah. We'll give that a shot. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you for all of this. Yeah. You bet. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Our next question is from Alan. Hi, Alan. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Alan. Well, my question, when you uh, have an existing roof and you bring a, you have a gable transverse into it and you California on top of it and you do your framing, it will cut it, the valleys as true valleys instead of building on top of the existing roof. So I go, I manually go in and uh, to the framing and extend the rafters. Right. Rebuild it for any reason. Right. It cuts the rafters back to uh, True Valley. Can I lock in those rafters so when I rebuild it, um, it'll uh, show that it's being built on top of an existing and not so cut you, the rafters? Yeah, I think I understand what you're asking. And when you have an overbuild, we're getting a little bit of feedback. Maybe you can mute while I'm talking. So you got an overbuild, maybe something that would look like this, and it's coming over the top of your roof plane. And when you have your framing, you've adjusted it manually so that it is the way you would actually build it in the field. And then when you make adjustments, that framing gets changed. Is that is that accurate, what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, have to read it. Yeah, it's not. Uh, uh, I haven't tried locking in the, the roof, but um, if I did lock it in, would that keep my rafter changes. So I might just pause here, framing. Al. Yeah. So Al, um, you're on. Are you uh, maybe uh, in, offer any observations on how to best handle that condition? Um, the only thing that I've done is to, once, the, once I have the overlay set, I'll take the primary roof section and drag it back down. To, to mimic the the real condition, because in actual fact, the roof is continuing underneath the overlay. Okay. So I'll pull that roof section back down and maybe cut the tails off so that it, it bears the way it actually will at the field. In essence, make the model exactly the way the house is going to be. So then the, uh, the rafters will build underneath and you won't have to worry about that cutoff. I had tried that. When I end up rebuilding, I end up uh, losing that, and I have to manually go back and for the framing and show the rafters extending back down. I haven't seen that one. Um, maybe uh, in your framing. Let's see if I have my framing on in here. Let me switch this over to the framing view. In your framing. Al, uh, Alan, <clears throat> in your rafters that you have, you could maybe go in there and you see how there's an automatic height setting for your rafters? Uh -huh. What you might try is uncheck that so you could group select all of your rafters. So once you've, once you've edited them and you have them the way you want them for your, for your build, you could maybe remove this automatic height. And then if you make any adjustments in the roof, it may help where those rafters may not move. You could also lock that layer. Uh, it may also help a little bit. Okay. Locking the layer, that's 
uh, well, that, screen, that's or? not, yeah. So, um, that way you're not going to maybe miss, you know, select one and move it after you've already grabbed it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you rebuild this roof, then it may re retain it in place. Let's just try it. Let's just see. Let's, um, okay. and I'm going to remove the automatic height on this. Okay. And then if I go back in, let's see if we can go back into the 3D. Uh, let's switch back to the floor plan and let's switch over to our roof view. Okay. So I think this is the roof we were looking at. And if we change the pitch on these two roofs, that's probably going to change it. But let's go ahead and update the pitch. Let's open it up and we'll lock the plate. We'll just change the pitch to 3 and 12. We won't worry about the rest of it. So I've just changed the pitch on it. And when we go back into the 3D view, yeah, my framing didn't update in here. So I don't have automatic framing on. So it doesn't, I don't know that it matters if I have the automatic height on or off. Is that close to what you're doing? Well, I'm not. Uh, which, which one did you change? The black I changed, I changed, or? I changed the roof pitch right in here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's exactly the problem. Now the rafters, this one would be built on top of the other roof. I understand so I that. I don't, rafters, right. I don't have, I don't have right. these pulled down like this is what you're talking about. And then really exactly. what, you, what you're going to be doing is you're going to raise, you know, if, this, if these rafters are 11 inches or something, you're going to raise that roof plane up 11 inches, build your framing, right? So then it's on top of it. Mm. Scott? Go ahead, Al. Uh, there is a well, checkbox in the roof dialogue in the roof section dialog to retain framing. Mm -hmm. If the framing can be generated, looks correct to begin with, then that can be retained. It's under structure. Um, and it looks like that might uh, hold uh, through any other roof editing. So let's, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and uh, we'll just do this real quickly. So I'm gonna make sure that on the roof plane, we set this back. I think we changed it to, was that 2 and 12 initially? Lock the plate. And then if I raise this up, that 11 and a quarter inches, so I'm going to raise this up, move it 11 and a quarter inches. And then we rebuild the framing just for those selected objects. Now let's go back into our camera view. So you see how that pulls it up? Yeah, you're changing um, on, on a low pitch. You might have to do that. But if you got a 4 and 12 or 6 and 12, you want those at the same level and not mm -hmm. raising it. Mm -hmm. So the rafters come down and uh, actually, I'll call it float. On top of the the gable that you're tying that overlays it, it's almost floating on top of the existing rafters. Sure. Yeah, it, and, and I think once you've got the the framing the, the way the way you want it, Al Alan. The fact, then, the fact that you can lock the framing, I had it notice that that might just do it. Yeah. So once you've once you've done those edits, then. Be sure to retain the framing in that roof plane. And again, that was, we go back in there, oh, in the structure panel, retain roof plane framing. Yeah. I, the good chance that's going to solve it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. That we have Kareem here. Hi, Kareem. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. I have three questions. Um, I had oh. to move away for a bit, so I didn't, I don't know if you touched these, but one, um, there's a, the roof cut wall bottom. Could you, could you explain how that works? Um, 
And two, the gable roof line, how does that work? And three, how can I get like a roof beam to go horizontal to create like a, a cross beam? If I'm doing a, th a truss and I want to have like an individual beam, how do I get it to, to flow just horizontal as opposed to following the pitch of the roof? Okay, let's see if we can answer a couple of your questions here. So I just pulled this roof back so we can peek inside the house. So the way that this wall is working in here is since this roof, when it comes over and splits that, what I've set in this wall is there's a setting down in the bottom of this dialog that says if the roof is being split by, if the wall is being split by the roof, then use a different wall type on the other side of it, okay? And you can choose uh -huh. whichever wall type you have. So that's how that works. And then with the, let's see what kind of uh, roof we have here. Let's go back and rebuild this roof so that we have this set up. Just set that back to a hip wall. Okay, so in this case, I have a simple gable roof and if you want a gable line on one side of it, there is a roof tool called gable line. You will find that tool underneath your roof settings. And as I kind of scroll over here off to the side, click and drag, turn the layer on, and that will generate a gable roof for you. Oh. Right? Oh, that's what that does. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one that third one was the, the the roof beam how can i get to the flow horizontal as opposed to following the pitch of the roof um well there's a couple ways if you just want it horizontal right and mm -hmm. you don't have ceiling in here so we get rid of the ceiling and we're looking inside of here let's take a section So you want a beam that cuts across here, right? Yes. Okay. Well, a couple things you could do is you can just use a soffit tool. One of the things, if you want it to just be flat, so underneath your cabinet tools is a soffit tool. Mm -hmm. Turn that layer on and let's pull that across. Is that what you're after? Yep. So you can just use a soffit tool. Um, your roof beam tool, if there's a ceiling beam, it may follow and go into the ceiling, but that's also a structural tool. If we delete that, you can use those tools. Let's use the beam tool. So let's grab that roof beam and just see how that differs. We'll just pull that across. And yeah, that's going up into the roof. So that beam. Yeah, it's the pitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's no way to there's no way to get it just the the, the roof beam just to flow straight horizontal as opposed to falling the pitch of the roof. You can use a floor beam. So if I delete the roof okay. beam, and mm -hmm. you want to use just a floor beam, let's cut mm -hmm. through here. Uh, and let's see here. That'll work. So. I think that converted it just to a generic and let's just make sure that this is the top. So let's move this up to 109 and let's go back in and make sure that layer is turned on. And where to go? Section alone. Uh, the section. The section cut. Check the section cut. Yeah, I turned it on. I'm not seeing it. No, no, no. The section. I, I think it's cut behind where the section is cut. The beam is actually behind. Mm -hmm. Check the floor plan. The floor plan. Yeah, I got it. I think you're right. Let's pull that. Snug that up. There we go. Yeah. So that works too. Okay. And then okay. you can simply set that on top of the plate. You can just move it up, snap it on top of the plate, and make any adjustments. Nice. So you could use a floor beam or just a general framing member, and that way it won't follow. So if you want it more structural, 
then you can also change it to be different types. So if you want it to be an I beam or something like that, then you can nice. change it and set that up. That nice. works. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> Thank All you right. very much. Thanks a lot for calling in, Kareem. Scott, our next question comes from Yvette. Hi, Yvette. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, I have a question about um, going back to the story and a half uh -huh. um, building. And when I do that, you know, the roof shows up only on the first floor plan. Okay. Um, so it's, and so, you know, I'm trying, it's, I mean, I can use the, um, oh, what is that tool called? The reference display to show, you know, to show the roof and the, with the second floor walls and everything. But is there a, is there a, a simpler way or is, I mean is there a way to see the, the roof and the second floor at the same time other than that okay so if we do something you want to see your roof when you build it on the second floor but we're building a story and a half so we're ignoring the second floor is that fair right right okay so if I go in and we build a uh, second floor so we have one and we'll just use the same one and then we go back in, so we're on the second floor, we build the roof. And when we build the roof, we check this button here that says ignore the second floor. And then we maybe make it 60 or so inches. And then let's make sure that we turn on the automatic roofs. So I'm seeing it on the first floor, but I don't see it on the second floor, right? And you want to see it up there. What you can do, Yvette, is you can grab these roof planes. And then in my lower status bar down here, you see these two little uh, buttons down here that kind of have a like a picture of a roof with a little arrow. Display on floor above and display on floor below. Mm -hmm. So you can, and that will turn off the automatic roofs when you do it, but now those roof planes are superimposed on the floor above. And this can actually be pretty helpful if you have a condition where you have a small bump out on floor one that doesn't exist on floor two, and you wanna see your entire roof structure all on one floor, then you can just take those roof planes and force them to all be on the same floor. Okay, thanks, so, very helpful. Okay, great. Scott, our next question is from Ken. Hi, Ken, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. A um, okay. couple questions. Uh, with that interior checkbox, I've used that. It automatically comes out on my drawings. And where the wall is bumped out past the eave of the adjoining plane like you we're showing there on that um, project you have. It shows actually the interior wall on the instead of the siding. Okay, so on the, the upper line cuts. So on the upper part of the wall is showing the interior wall. No, if you um, scan around, if you okay. can. Yeah, let me open that plan. That's actually just a picture. Yeah. And this has happened on numerous projects. Okay. So I had to uncheck the checkbox and deal with the interior or siding being on the inside of the house. Okay. Right at that lower eave. Now, right here? Right above the door. Okay. Right above oh, the door there. Oh, down down no, here? No, from the eave out to the outer por portion. Right. Right in this Number area? Right in there, it will show where the roof is being cut. It will actually show interior wall instead of the siding. Hmm. Just in a portion of the wall, Ken? It's just in a portion of the wall. Okay. So sometimes when your roof cuts through to the two by six or whatever material you have, it will cut the siding off. And if we go back into the floor plan, let's, 
kind of peek in here. Let's switch this over to the roof plan view and we'll zoom in to where that area is. And let's turn on our wall layers so we can see exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so you see my roof plane I've right. selected. You see how it's actually touching the outer line where my mouse is? Yeah. If I pull this roof plane into the stud, it may not even let me do it because of the way you it's special set snapping. up. <laughs> I may have special snapping on. Um, but if there's a condition where your roof plane is snapped roughly where my mouse is, right. then what will happen is it will cut that siding out. And then you may see that condition where it strips it off because the wall is behaving where the roof is cutting it. Okay, because it usually happens sense. where it's an automatic gable, uh -huh. generated automatic gable, and the program generates the wall mm -hmm. and then cuts the siding off. Right. So we'd go into the manual mode and take a look at exactly this issue right in here where you can click on the roof and verify where that's being you know, snapped at. And you may need to pull that back just a little bit so that it's not going to cut that siding right in here. Okay. Yeah, and so give that a shot. And just another quick question. The gentleman that had that four gable um, issue, mm -hmm. uh, if you have boxed eaves for your house mm -hmm. and the valley pitch comes right out, rafter comes right out to the face of the eave with the gable roof. Chief Architect does not do a boxed eaves right at those two points. Okay. Is there, how can I get boxed eaves there without slightly pulling the gable end off the face of the eave? Um, that's a good question. I don't know that I have a great answer right now. Do you have an example plan you can maybe send in? We'll take a look at it. Um, most of my plans are uh, quite large. Maybe just do a quick sample of a clover leaf house that that yeah. has this condition and send it in. Well, let me let me take a look at it. You can send it at sales at Chief Architect. We'll peek at it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Thanks for calling in, Ken. Our next question is from Charles. Hi, Charles. Go ahead and unmute Hi. yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, a couple of quick questions regarding uh, auto roof generation. Okay. One in your in your very first example where you had those two columns with with the uh, beam across and you generated that roof uh, manually. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you shouldn't, you could not use just your invisible walls to have it automatically um, create those those roofs, or was that just for demonstration purposes only? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Charles. So in that example, um, where where is that? I'll pull that up real quick. Where to go? Here we go. So let's see here. You're talking about that one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so one. yeah, so a, a great way to do this is to just use the invisible wall tool and um, with that way you don't see the walls and let, let the program generate it for you. And that's the easiest way. I usually always do it that way, but I wanted to incorporate drawing a manual roof plane to show how that worked. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. And the second real quick one is um, on a two-story house, around the first story, is there a way to automatically generate uh, roof overhangs around the entire perimeter of the first story as a shading device? Or would that all have to be done manually? Hmm. So around the outside of this house, you want just a small little perimeter roof? Right, around the entire... Uh, exterior of the house, then you can uh, manually edit it um, a little later. 
Well, you could use an invisible wall all the way around it, right? Or manually draw this roof plane and just copy and reflect it all the way around. So invisible wall or manually draw the roof plane the mm, same way okay. that I did here. So that might be a couple options for you, Kevin. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Scott. Have a good one. Yeah. yeah. Scott, we have Amy here with a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Good morning. Um, I have, in a lot of cases, a nine-foot house plate, hip roof, and at the porch, I want to draw posts out front and raise that plate to 10 foot six. And I'm unsure of how to make those posts and, and slab where I want them and then generate that roof that is higher and lays over the top of the existing. Okay. So Amy, let's see if we can repeat that. I've got a pretty similar house here that we've been using. And let's just get back to that. So you've got a condition and maybe you got a porch out front here. Yes. And it's 10 feet that pops up. Something right. like that. Okay. Right. So how do I how do I um how do I make those posts to begin with and, okay. and get them at the 10 foot six plate height? Okay. So let's let's do this. Well, I'm gonna use the invisible wall. And I'm just going to kind of create a small portico right out in the front. Okay. And we take this and let's increase it by 12 inches. So it's about 10 feet. And then if we call it a porch, we'll probably get a little concrete thing out front and not molding. And I think that's about it. Okay, so here's our porch, and we'll set that outside wall to be a gable. And then let's build our roof. So I'm gonna turn on the automatic roof. I'll just leave it at eight and 12, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And when we take a look at that, this looks a little interesting. Let's see what the roof pit this is, okay. You got a nine foot ceiling in, inside the house, right? Yeah. So this is going to look a little interesting, what's going on here, right? So the way that's mm -hmm. connecting in isn't ideal. So I can manually kind of get rid of that. But is that what you're after if, if I do a little bit of cleanup in here? Uh, no, I want the porch oh. to be hipped. Oh, you want it to be hipped. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. And I, okay. I want to know how to get those posts up there. Okay you know, to support it. Okay, so let me just do this real quickly so I can get this set. Let's do that. Okay, so if we want to get these posts in there, I've got a set of posts already. So you yeah, can how just do I create it. those? I, I'm not sure how to create those. Okay, sure. So what you can do is a few different things. We have a specific post tool which is more framing, or you can use a solid tool. So if you use a, let's see what I've got here. Okay, so that's millwork. So if you use the post tool, let's go into our framing, and you're gonna find a specific post tool, and I'll kind of hover my mouse over this. Mm -hmm. so, you can, so you see the post? Yes. And I'm just gonna click and place a post, turn that layer on. At that point, you can resize it by double clicking on it, and specifying whatever it is. So if we just set that to baby be nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter, so it's kind of beefy. Mm -hmm. And then we go in and we figure out in a cross section view, let's pull that over here and let's figure out where we need to do it. So I'm gonna use the section tool and I'm gonna cut a section right through here. Okay, so here's this big post. So if we turn on our crosshairs, I'm gonna pull that down, figure out where it needs to bear. And then once I'm happy with that, you can use the copy and reflect tool to flip that over to the other side. Is that kind of what you're after? Yeah, but I want the uh, beam to be 
a foot and a half higher than okay. the house plate. Okay, sure. So, so you want the roof, if we go back in here, you want this roof to be a foot and a half higher. Is that what you're telling right. me? Yes. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take these roof planes. Let's just move them up by using the transform replicate exactly 12 inches. Something like that? Yes. Okay. So then we have a beam tool. You can see one here. Works just like the post tool. And again, you want to go in. Let's do this in a floor plan view. So if we find, uh, where is the beam tool? We'll just use a general framing member. And we just draw this general framing member in here. And then we take our section view. Let's pull that back so we can see exactly where he's at. And make sure that layer is on. There it is. Something like that. Um, yeah, usually I have those beams return back. Sure. You can easily back do that. Way. Just make a copy of it and then you pull it back into, into the plan, right? So just make a copy of it, <clears throat> paste it, rotate it, and then you can position it and pull it back however you want. Okay. Does that work? So Use that so I would use that same theory if that were not a hipped porch but a gable, and then those side beams could come out as outriggers. Sure, okay. So that's a general framing. You can use uh, you can use quite a few tools. Sometimes I use a polyline solid. Um, I use that for this one out front for these little columns here. But the general framing tool um, works just fine for that as well. And then, but the start is to give it an invisible wall to create the room. Yeah, it's easier. I like to use that to generate the roof. It's a little bit easier than drawing it manually. I think the caller before you asked. Uh, why did I draw that roof manually? And, uh, you know, it's easier to let the program do that. And you can use that with an invisible wall to give you a room definition. Mm -hmm. If you took your bachelor plan mm -hmm. and your entry and created something like this at your bachelor plan, plan entry, how mm -hmm. would that look laying back over the existing roof? Um, so that, yeah, that plan that we've been looking at, uh, there is a, uh, I think I used in this case, let's take a peek here. I used either a general framing member over the front of this to create a trellis-like view. And of course they're using slope, so it comes in at a different thing. And if we peek on those, that's using a, that's actually using a just a joist tool for that. And then this side part is probably using a polyline solid because it's in an angle and I would have drawn that in an elevation view to make sure that that came in exact. Mm -hmm. So with this, if you took the trellis off and you put posts at the outer corners of your existing entry sure. slab yep. and created a roof that popped up over what you have, so it so this is the entry up yeah, higher. Sure. Yeah, that's all fun stuff to look at, what the options would be. And you want to make sure, you know, I've got a set of skylights in there. You want to make sure that it comes in and you got this roof over here. So you'd have to figure out, you know, how does that all evaluate in? But those are nice options you can look at for your client. Uh huh. Okay. But that slab out in front is created by an invisible wall. Well, that's a good question. I don't think so because I don't have a roof out here. And if I look at that, it's just a using a solid. 
So I don't have room definition out here as a porch because there is no roof out there and I didn't need to generate one. So it looks like I just used a solid tool for that. And in section view, that just flows from the inside out. Um, in a section view, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Let's go back to the floor plan that probably has a section. Let's cut the section open and see what we have. I don't remember exactly. And uh, it looks like I've actually turned that section off to have not have the trellis. Yeah, so you can see that depending on where that's cut, those were those um, trellis members are coming in because it's cut right in the middle and it's a back clip. So you're not seeing the other end of it. OK, but it is showing the, the foundation. It's showing the slab. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. it could. I, you know, here it is right, right in here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's important to me. So, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. This is very informative as all right. we all are. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Amy. Scott, we are going to check in again with Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Go ahead and ask your question. You may have answered this, but um, I was looking at doing um, a little awning roof um, under the shed roof. Um, so, like, with it being taller, giving giving some protection over a door with a little roof there, and wondering, you know, if it's flat. Uh, and we were to attach it with a cable back to the wall, hmm. is there a good tool to do that with? So if I understand, let me see if I have this handy here. So you're looking at some sort of a roof like this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so the way that you could do that, one is you could draw an invisible wall out here, and then you would set maybe this outside wall to be a gable, and then you could set the other side to be a, a um, high shed and then set your pitch. That's probably a quarter inch pitch. And then that will generate it automatically. You could also manually draw it. You'd click and drag on this side, click up slope, and then you could form it right around that corner is probably the way that I did that. And then for these supports, if you need a support, um, you could do that in a section view and use a solid or something like that. These are actually toilet flushers, if you want to know the answer. That's <laughs> wall toilet flushers. But they look pretty good to me. So um, that's that's what those are, toilet flushers on the outside. Okay. Perfect. That's that, what I was looking for. Does that work for you, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. Scott, we have two more questions. Our next one is from Daniel. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, when you make a um, full return on a cable, I sometimes want to put a uh, standing metal seam on that and leave the roof with asphalt shingles. Okay. And I cannot get it to break. I tried doing a break line. So what I end up having to do is leave it without a return and manually create the roof return. But when I do that, even following the documentation I found online, it still leaves some odd lines as it connects the fascia. Okay, let's see if we can figure that out. <clears throat> so you've got a roof return on one of the walls. Is that right? Right. So a full return across the gable. Okay, so let's click on the auto return. You said full. And then we'll turn on our automatic roof. Okay, good. And it's a different material. Is that is that fair? Yeah. So like you have the the metal roof you're showing on there on the return, oh, yeah. but I usually have asphalt shingles on the main body of the house. Let's see if we can just find one. Okay, so I'm gonna go into component mode. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. So it doesn't give you the resolution to um, do that. So let's undo it. And let's see if we can go back into our floor plan view and figure out where is that roof return. Uh, 
Al or anybody else out there, is there a way to separate the roof return from the main body of your of your design? Does anybody know the answer to that? Hey, Scott, I don't think you can currently edit automatically generated roof returns. You'd have to just draw the roof return manually and then you can modify it like a roof plane. Okay. So, so can you grab that roof plane? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's automatically generated, so I can't grab it. So it looks like to answer the question, Daniel, I'm going to have to draw that manually if I want the material to be different. But that'd be a great feature. Uh, well, it'd be a, a great behavior for that to be able to paint that individually. Could you possibly just quickly walk through that to see if Drop maybe there's manually. a setting? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it's it's showing up okay, but like a like I was saying, the facial lines as they attach to each other are, are showing intersecting lines instead of it being smooth like it is when it's auto generated. Okay. So I got rid of it, right? And we come back into the floor plan. And let's just kind of click. Where's my roof tool? Let's click and drag a roof plane. And we'll just pull that to the edge approximately. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's exactly at the same height. So let's figure out what this, remember I kind of did a build and ignore second floor. So it's a little interesting of a roof, but we'll go back into the roof. And uh, for this roof, we'll figure out that the fascia top is this value here. So I'll just copy that. And then we'll just take this, make sure we lock the pitch and then put that same fascia height in there. And that should move that down. Okay. So here we are with this roof plane, and now I can paint that to be separate, right? And was the question about how this joins in over here? Yeah, when I drag those to connect them, um, I'm just not getting a smooth line in the fascia. Like okay. it, it's, it's not like it, it doesn't connect like it does when you do the auto generate yeah that could be um let's see let's give this a shot and i'm gonna probably pull that back at a 45 and let's see what we've got here oh wrong one we're close let's turn that on to be vector and see if we're getting a clean view so in the vector view you do see that the way that's being cut in right Right. So when uh, when I'm putting this into a layout and I'm not doing it in color, you see right. those lines. Yeah. I don't know that I have a good a good good solution for you. Al, do you have any suggestions? Uh, you might try just backing the uh, roof off just a little bit so that it's not flush with the outside fascia. Just, you know, so it's not quite as wide. Um, the other thing is, if you are going to layout, use Edit Layout and just knock that little line out of there. That line there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But if you if right now that thing is what? How wide is that roof section? Oh, this this area right in here. Yeah. If you just back it off just a little bit, the width. Oh. I mean, the the depth for the the building like if it's 16 inches you go to 15 and oh seven eighths something so, like that so it pull it up fascia. yeah slightly like that i did it quite a bit yeah you don't have to move it much just enough to get it behind the fascia but if you want it to look right just use edit layout in uh, in your uh, layout page and you can take that line out Okay, okay, so I'll just have to play with that and do it manually. Yeah, I don't know but, that there's an there's an automated way. I mean that that's I think that's about as clean as we can get it. Of course, it doesn't right. square square up right there. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. I, I did have one other question. Um, when I'm creating the roof, is there a way for it to auto generate at the correct height to include a 12 inch energy heel on my truss? Hmm. Sure. When you build your roof, um, one of the things you want to do is make sure you check used trusses, first of all. Right. And then mm -hmm. what you want to do is down in the automatic bird's mouth, you said 12 inches. Right. You're going to want to do it right in here. Okay. And then let's turn on the automatic roof and we'll get rid of all the other stuff. And that's going to give you an energy heel truss. If we cut a truss in here, and then let's just slide through and pull that camera back and open it up and see if that's giving us what we're after. Something like that. Well, typically your wall, your soffit would be a foot higher. That looks like it's sitting right on top of the plate there. It is, but it's it's giving you this energy heel right here because I raised it up 12 inches. So if you want the wall to generate 12 inches, you would not use the truss option, and that will give you a 12-inch wall. Does that make sense? So if I okay. does that make sense when you when you're going to build? If you want, you don't want to have trusses, then you can remove this, and you could then raise this up 12 12 inches right in here. And that's going to give you the added wall. Of course, I have to rebuild this truss. Let me just open that up and we'll force the rebuild real quick. <clears throat> so that wall is right in here. And that's what's going to generate that. I probably wouldn't use a truss in that case, but that's going to generate that wall right in here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. So what I've been doing is building my roofs, selecting them, and then just using the using the tool to just raise it up you know 12 inches yeah so it depends on how you're going to build the roof so when you build it if you want it to have this 12 inch wall that we have right here the key to that is make sure you don't have trusses selected and raise it off the plate 12 inches right here if you want the truss to do it for you make sure you check the truss come down in here and raise it off the plate that will leave your wall at the normal nine foot or so plate height. Okay, great. Okay. Got nice. our, final, our final question comes from Laura. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, Laura. Hi, Scott. Sorry, I know this is going so long. This is back to that quick, uh, it's not a quick question, no big deal, but um, I think you kind of were talking about it before with that trellis, and I was wondering, um, I wanted to kind of build a trellis slash pergola that comes off the house, and I don't know if you do that with framing. I never use framing, so I'm not really sure if it's something fast, would you be able to show me how to do that? Mm -hmm. So, Laura, do you use Chief Architect Premier, or what product are you using? Yeah, I, I use Premier, but I never really use the framing. Okay. I, I only ask because I know some of the folks out there may be using Chief Architect Interiors, and so the framing tool isn't in that product. And for those people, I'd recommend maybe using something like a uh, polyline solid. But a lot of times when I build a trellis, let me just kind of clean up some of the stuff we've got in here. And let's get back. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to do it like with a pitch, you know, maybe a small pitch. Oh, you want a trellis with a pitch? I mean, to, to come off the house, like kind of like a roof would be, but um, I don't know if, it would, if it's best to do it with just polyline solids or, you know, if you could use like the framing tool or, you know, using that plan that you have where you've got the, that piece on the end there, the, um, the uh, post down there. You had yeah. something off the house and resting on those posts. Right. Okay. So um, this probably isn't ideal. So let me just get rid of that um, little invisible wall so that we can rebuild the roof because that's kind of a bad thing. So let me just get rid of that and we'll just turn on the automatic roofs. Okay. So if I'm going to put a trellis in there, probably one easy way to do this is 
let's grab our roof tool and I'm just going to manually draw the roof in here. And we'll pull it up, turn off the automatic roof, and we'll figure out, let's make sure that we have that set on architectural, sorry. It's getting a little bit late, I apologize here. Okay. So let's see what we have. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is let's make sure that we set the pitch of this so that this comes in at the right height. So I'm gonna grab the fascia top of the other roof and then we'll grab this one and I'm gonna set the fascia, we'll lock that, set the fascia top so we know it's exact and then we'll lower that pitch to two and 12. Okay. And now we should be able to figure out how to join this roof to this roof. Oops, pull that back down. Okay, so I've got a condition like this and I wanna make it a trellis. One of the easiest ways to do that, click on the roof and there's a frame individual object. And when you say, you know, if you want this trellis to have thicker framing members, what you can do before you frame it is come into the structure of this. And right now the structure is using a, basically a two by 12, okay? And that probably works for us. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna click this button at the very bottom that says frame for the selected object. Turn on the display of that. And then let's turn off the roof layer so we can actually see that. Okay, can you just delete that roof layer then in that? Because obviously you want the other roofs on, but you want to keep Oh, that. yeah, I, yeah, sure. So if we turn the roof well, back I'm asking on, my question, is that, is that a possibility to do that where you just delete that surface of the roof? I'm not asking if you can do it. I'm asking if that's something you, that, that's how you do that. Because I want it to look exactly like that, but I want to keep the roofs on <laughs> on the rest of the house. Probably it'd be easy to do is just modify this so that we don't have those layers. So we could go into the structure itself and I can get rid of the surface. So I'm just gonna delete those things and or make it an air gap. Let's see if that got rid of it. And then I'll just do the same thing for the soffit. So <laughs> a few moving parts with this, but um, eventually, I'll get there. Okay, well, that's excellent. Okay, you you don't need to go through all of it. I I get I get it now. That's excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Scott, did you have any announcements you wanted to make? Okay. Well, uh, thanks everybody for attending today's session, and uh, just a few notes that uh, we have coming up. We have um, we have a virtual training that we'll be starting up at the end of the month. I'm just we do the introductory kitchen and bath and intermediate class. These are across four different days, four hours a day. And it's a great way to learn more about the program. If you'd like to take advantage of that, we do the same exact class without an instructor. It's called the on-demand training. So you can watch those at your own convenience. And again, you can easily sign up for those. We're gonna be focusing on roofs for the month. If we skip down here just a little bit. So next week, we will be working on the one and a half story, multiple pitches. It may repeat a few things that we've done, but we're gonna mix it up a little bit and uh, focus on one and a half story and multiple pitches. If you'd like to come back for additional information, that will be back here um, coming up. And then we've also got dormers at the towards the end of the month. And so that is a session that's going on. And then I think it's this last Friday. So if I just kind of back up just a little bit here. We've got a boot camp going on tomorrow. And if you're a little bit newer to the program or just want to learn a little bit, this is a great way to learn on how the program is working. So I would encourage you to attend that session and uh, take advantage of learning a little bit more. I want to thank everybody for coming today. I was just trying to find my last uh, fun graphic here. Uh, happy uh, April Fool's Day, and we'll be sending out an email link to 
the session that we recorded today, as well as a survey. We'd appreciate your feedback. Have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you back here same time, same place next week.